The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is important for maintaining blood pressure and also maintaining proper levels of sodium and potassium concentrations and can even be used to help maintain um, pH balance by regulating hydrogen ion concentrations. And this is a basic outline of how that works. We start with angiotensinogen, which is a plasma protein normally found in your blood. It's nothing um, particularly special or made, you just have it in your blood as a plasma protein. And if blood pressure and all of your electrolyte levels are normal, then angiotensinogen continues to flow in your blood and nothing happens. If you have arterial pressure that falls, so blood pressure drops, you have cells in your kidneys called juxtaglomerular cells. And in particular, these cells are found in the walls of the afferent arteriole entering the glomerulus. The juxtaglomerular cells, if arterial pressure falls, will secrete an enzyme called renin. This enzyme's job, renin, converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And now you have angiotensin 1 floating around in your blood. Angiotensin 1 by itself is a weak vasoconstrictor, so it can help a little bit to increase your blood pressure by constricting your arterioles, but generally this is not where you're going to see the most effect from this system. As angiotensin 1 continues to circulate in your blood, eventually it will arrive at the lungs. The endothelium of the lungs secretes an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme. Uh, shorthand would be ACE. So if you've ever heard of an ACE inhibitor, it is a drug that acts on this particular enzyme. It inhibits this enzyme. So angiotensin converting enzyme, as its name implies, converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now you have angiotensin 2 floating around in your blood. Now angiotensin 2 is a very potent vasoconstrictor and it works very rapidly. And so it can quickly help to increase your blood pressure through vasoconstriction. A more long-term effect that takes a longer time um, to see the effects of is it also causes the excretion of sodium and water in the kidneys. Um, so this is a little bit more of a long-term effect. You're not going to see its effects quite as rapidly. But angiotensin II does cause excretion of sodium and water, um, but it in particular is a, is a very potent vasoconstrictor. So it helps to elevate your blood pressure. So angiotensin II in and of itself is, um, is a hormone in your body that, that can do a lot of work and show a big effect when it comes to your blood pressure. Another thing that it can do is go to your adrenal cortex, specifically the zona glomerulosa in your adrenal glands, and cause the release of a mineralocorticoid called aldosterone. And aldosterone has several effects. Uh, one effect is as aldosterone binds to its receptors in principal cells in the renal tubule in the kidneys, it causes the reabsorption of sodium. So aldosterone works in your kidneys to cause more sodium to be put back into your bloodstream. And it also causes the secretion of potassium. So while you're retaining sodium, you're getting rid of potassium. And that will end up in your urine as it works in the kidneys. An additional uh, effect of aldosterone, if it binds to its receptors on intercalated cells in the kidneys, it can cause the secretion of hydrogen ions, so you lose more hydrogen ions in your urine, causing more alkalosis in the body, uh, and it exchanges those hydrogen ions for potassium. So depending on where it binds, it can have multiple effects. The main one that it's probably mostly known for is um, aldosterone's work in the principal cells, causing the reabsorption of sodium and the secretion of potassium. And because it has these effects, there are a couple of, um, of different ways that you can influence aldosterone secretion. <clears throat> so this is kind of a convoluted diagram that shows all of the different things that go into the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Uh, and you can see up here some of the things that will cause um, secretion of renin. Because as I said before, you have angiotensin, or sorry, angiotensinogen that's floating around in your blood just as a plasma protein. It's made normally, but you do not normally make renin. 
So in order to make renin, you need to have a decrease in your blood pressure. That is the stimulus for your kidneys to make this enzyme, the renin. And then you can start down this, this process. Um, but so a decrease in blood pressure, which may be due to a decrease in blood volume. The decrease in blood volume may be due to dehydration, so a lack of water. Or if you have a sodium deficiency, um, or if you're hemorrhaging somewhere uh, and you're losing blood that way, any of these things can lead to a decrease in blood volume and then a decrease in blood pressure, and that can start this process. Another stimulus that can, um, that can stimulate the adrenal cortex is a spike in your potassium levels. So if you all of a sudden have a, a rapid increase in potassium in your extracellular fluid, remember potassium should be abundant in your intracellular fluid, but you shouldn't have um, excess potassium in your extracellular fluid. Um, that can cause cardiac arrest. So a spike in potassium in your extracellular fluid is um, a, a big cause that will cause you to release aldosterone so that you can secrete that excess potassium and get your levels back down to normal. So to review one more time, if you have dehydration, sodium deficiency, a decrease in blood volume or blood pressure, that's what causes your renin release. And renin will take angiotensinogen that's floating around in your blood, convert it to angiotensin 1, Angiotensin 1, as it floats in your circulation and visits your lungs, your lungs make angiotensin converting enzyme, which will convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a great vasoconstrictor. We also discussed long term, it can cause um, sodium and water excretion. Um, and then that helps you to remember our. Our initial issue was decrease in blood pressure. So vasoconstriction caused by angiotensin II can help raise your blood pressure. Angiotensin II can also stimulate the adrenal cortex, the zona glomerulosa, to secrete aldosterone. Aldosterone works in the kidneys to help you keep, save, reabsorb sodium and then therefore water as it follows that salt. And it also helps you to get rid of potassium, and hydrogen ions. In saving that sodium and water and putting that back in your blood, you're increasing your blood volume. And this also will help you increase your blood pressure. So you have two different ways through vasoconstriction and also through blood volume increase that this RAA system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system has to help you um, bring your blood pressure back to normal if it's low.